uh, that we might have aliens in our own neighborhood. And by our own neighborhood, I'm going way beyond the planet Earth. I'm going into our entire solar system, just our solar system. Can we be sure that there are no aliens in our neighborhood, Seth? Well, that's a different thing. About one-third of the population of Canada believes that there are not only aliens out in space, but they're here buzzing the countryside and occasionally hauling people out of their homes in Winnipeg for unauthorized social visits. I, I gather it's, it's fair to conclude that you don't believe that we have aliens uh, living among us. Uh, I know so, uh, physics, of course, is a vacuum, and people don't know what they don't know, so they, they fill that pocket, they fill that vacuum with their imagination, so they believe all sorts of things. But I know you're a man of science, and you're a man who needs evidence, and so I, I, I gather it's, it's fair to conclude that you don't believe that we have aliens uh, living among us. Uh, I don't. Full professor of psychiatry at Harvard University. 1977 was a turning point in John's career. He was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his biography of Lawrence of Arabia. When he treated his first experiences, John had had almost 40 years of professional psychiatric practice. In 1994, his conclusions about alien abduction phenomena caused a scandal, yet they would be supported by many other medical teams. He wrote that the reported abductions were not hallucinations, nor were they schizophrenia, psychosis, or any other mental condition. He stated these abductions were not dreams. The abductees were sincere, they had nothing to gain, and were aware of the absurd nature of their experiences. Amazingly, they had all told the same story, down to the slightest detail. Studio. Artist Bud Hopkins is the keeper of some images that will expand, blow, or maybe even close your mind. There's a photo album devoted to odd, mysterious scars. Almost like a whole... Yeah, it looks like a, um, a biopsy. Boy, if these walls could talk. There are stacks of drawings of little aliens called grays. You know, big head, tiny mouth, almond eyes. These aren't Bud's work. They come from his rather unusual assortment of friends. Is that the same person? I don't know. Uh -oh. Different. Different people. Wow. Now, the important thing about this is all of these are really old. This is right. before this face was on every t-shirt. Bud has become the father confessor for hundreds of people who are convinced they have been abducted by aliens. It sounds totally off the wall. And I'm the first one to say almost everything that we're discussing here sounds off the wall. But that doesn't mean it's not true. Ladies and gentlemen, tray table up, seat belts buckle. This will be a wild ride. Do you have any idea how common these encounters are? Well, my guess is that they're very common simply because <laughs> I just keep running into so many cases. In 1964, Bud saw a UFO. And then in 76, wrote an article in New York's Village Voice about an alleged alien encounter in New Jersey. His phone hasn't stopped ringing since. The mass of evidence gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And that's not a pleasant thought, you know, to me. Uh, mind you, I'm looking into something. We need evidence, and so I, I, I gather it's, it's fair to conclude that you don't believe that we have aliens uh, living among us. Uh, I don't. I think that if that were the case, the evidence wouldn't be uh, controversial. It wouldn't be the subject for uh, blogs, late-night radio shows. It would be, well, just consider when the North American natives met the, the Europeans at the beginning of the, or the end, really, of the 15th century. Uh, you know, if you'd ask them 50 years later, do you think you're being invaded by Spaniards? Uh, I don't think that they would argue about it. They knew. Material <laughs> affected in some way. I would agree with Hawkins and Jacobs about that. I think it's true. Um, I mean, I've, when I first started hearing about that, it hadn't happened to me, and I was very reticent about it because it seemed quite terrible. But I've met and talked face to face with people who have, who have lived with this for years, and they're not lying. They're flat out not lying. We may not understand what that's really about, but it's very clear that what it looks like is there being that, that some kind of hybrids or something are being created by these people. That's what it looks like. Well, we're not exactly totally and completely sure of what is going on with this phenomenon. What we do know is that we're looking at an alien agenda that is based on the physiological exploitation of one species by another species. 
In other words, people feel that sperm is being taken from them, eggs are being taken from them, babies are being implanted in them and then removed. All of this is for an agenda that uh, is being kept essentially hidden from us. Uh, I look at this phenomenon with a certain amount of alarm. Other people feel that it's more benign than I, than I might feel. But whatever it is, uh, it is being kept from us. Uh, I feel that if this were a phenomenon that were ultimately to help us, that we would probably know this and that uh, the abductors would have made this clear. Uh, but this is uh, not what has happened, actually. And so um, I'm really uh, very, very disturbed about it. About I, I gather it's fair to conclude that you don't believe the book. Okay, anyway, living among us. Here was the pointy part, I think, up there. And what was the feeling when you looked at the eyes? Mm -hmm. It was scary. Mm -hmm. And what, scary why? What made it scary? The eyes looked evil. Evil? Mm -hmm. And what was evil about them? Mm -hmm. Say what you mean by evil. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it looked evil because I was just staring at me. With what? Staring at you as if what? As if to do what? As if it wanted to come and take you. As if it wanted to come and take you. That was the feeling you got? That it wanted you to go with it? Did you feel like you wanted to go with it? No. Did you feel, what was the effect on you when, when you felt it wanted to have you go with it? Huh? I just moved to and I started crying. They came running up here in such a panic. And, I mean, even if we had staged it, they could not have run all together like that. Even if we practiced it, I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. But they came up here like a living snake. And they just came, we were in the staff meeting, and we just heard them screaming, screaming, ah, and then we were here, you know, and child can't make that up. <laughs> I was very skeptical in the beginning as well. Um, I believed that they'd seen something, but I wasn't prepared to accept that it was anything supernatural or anything like that. But I think the consistency of, of what's been going on indicates that it was more than I was prepared to admit in the beginning. We need evidence, and so I, I gather it's, it's fair to conclude that you don't believe that we have aliens uh, living among us. Coincidence, or there's something going on which unites these two apparently very different domains of experience. Um, sex with spirits, very common among some. I know an Amazonian shaman whose wife in this world has actually left him because of his wife in the other world. It's that bad. He's got kids over there too. <laughs> and again, very similar with UFO abductees who have sex with aliens, are abducted repeatedly to care for their hybrid offspring, part alien, part human. Shamans often report being given books. They may be illiterate, but when they're given a book, they can suddenly read it. Um, Maria Sabina was given a book. She's that Mexican shaman who used the psilocyte cubensis uh, mushrooms. Um, and uh, she wasn't allowed to bring the book back, but she learned many things from it. Likewise with uh, Betty Hill. Um, she was given a book. Um, and similarly, Betty Andreasen. Um, and in many cases, these are people, both shamans and yufa, but these who return with a sense of mission and perhaps even healing powers. So shamans and aliens, I've drawn some of the many comparisons between them. But what about fairies and elves? This is another strange uh, area of human experience. And why do they also have so much in common with aliens and spirits? Now, I want to pay tribute to the incredibly important work of Jacques Vallée in his 1969 book, Passport to Magonia. Uh, and Jacques Vallée uh, documented for the first time the very curious crossovers between the entities that we construe as aliens and the entities that people in medieval Europe can construe as fairies and elves. Uh, and what I've done in, in my work is to just take that body of work on from 1969 and bring it right through uh, into the 21st century where we have uh, greatly more testimony uh, available. Um, if you go back to the Middle Ages, you'll find that fairies were renowned for abducting people, uh, that they were sometimes cruel and tortured people, but they also sometimes gave people gifts. 
uh, including healing powers, that they could fly, that they had aerial vehicles. All this is very common in fairy lore. And when fairies abducted you, they would quite often take you underground or into a cave. Uh, and it's interesting, in both of these medieval illustrations, here we see the fairies dancing in a ring, and then there's a doorway into the hollow hills beyond, and in the foreground, uh, an Amanita muscaria mushroom. And here, this young man is being seduced into the fairy underworld by beautiful fairy damsels, and uh, down there looks suspiciously like a clump of mushrooms to me. Fairies and elves also appear as human-animal hybrids. Uh, I keep this illustration on my desk. It's from the 15th century in Holland. It shows a group of fairies dancing in a circle, and as you can see, they are therianthropes. I, I gather it's fair to conclude that you don't believe the the Canadians are living among us. Between the graves and the government over the time. You have some graphic and horrific descriptions of medical anomalies and otherworldly experiments. There's something involving the removal of sexual material from the human body that I experienced myself, uh, that other people also experience in this phenomenon. It's not too surprising. I mean, if, they, if we are dealing with aliens from another world, they would be very interested in the DNA structure of the species on the planet, and one of the things they would be doing is these kinds of sexual material. We'd be doing it just like it's being done to us right now. Tell us, who in your book, or what, are the three thieves? When an abduction is about to happen, one of the things people see beforehand are these triangular three stars coming, moving slowly through the sky, and then the next thing they know, these beings will be around them. In the book, they, they have a sort of slightly sinister, slightly kind of jokey quality, and that's exactly how they how it felt to be around them. Uh, there's been a heightened interest in the possibility that perhaps our government has been covering up or withholding information about these encounters. Do you believe that that is the case? Obviously, something strange is going on, and uh, the face that the government puts on it is that it's all nonsense, and that can't be true. Intelligent aliens drive the differences. About one third of the population of Canada believe that there are not only aliens out in space, but they're here fucking the countryside and occasionally calling people out of their homes in Winnipeg for unauthorized social visits. I, I gather it's fair to conclude that you don't believe the aliens are living among us.